I'm Jill Klein. This is Aaron Nixon. We're a team. Um, in, actually, in more ways than one, since not only um, are we going to do this presentation together, um, I'm a faculty member at COGUIDE. Erin, um, for those of you in CAS, you recognize Erin because most recently she works in the budget office. If you've been here even longer, you know that Erin was also in CTRL. Um, and when she's not busy doing everything to keep CAS's money in order, she's also earning her MBA at COGOD in the professional MBA program. So she and I get to spend a lot Jill of our time together. Jill is my program director, so. So we have this call. <laughs> it, 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 this is just like way too, too cool. We thought before we would start, one of the things that would help us, especially as we go through some of the examples, um, and what's really cool about this technology, is just to tell us, um, because not everybody knows everybody, sort of your name and the school or the discipline that you represent, because I think it'll help inform the conversation. It'll make sure, as we've got lots of examples, and it'll help us zero in. So I guess, Vanya, you can start and just, you know. Okay. My name is Vanya. I'm with CTRL, but I'm also a PhD student in economics at AU. Uh, I'm Greg Sangelo. I'm in University of Communication. I'm actually an online writer for the homepage. Awesome. Okay, we're cool. <laughs> we may not look cool. <laughs> 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 uh, Dawn Morgan with SOC and I'm in the MFA film program. Film pro oh, it's the film section up here. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes I'm Matt Lucas, uh, also an MFA film student. Excellent, make a movie, Iran. Iran Carmel, I teach at the Coga School of Business. Lynn Perry, I'm on the faculty of the School of Communication and the Journalism Division. Excellent. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Emilio Pasco in the State Department, Foreign Service Institute. Excellent. Michael Matos, University Library. Uh, Todd Newman, I'm a PhD student, School of Communication. Jason Parker, I'm an MFA in Digital Electronic Media. I'm Phil Brennan, I'm the manager of One Systems for the Office of Commerce. Eight. I'm Nancy Cameron Salon, the assistant technology specialist for uh, It's more than just that. <laughs> you know that. Uh, Devin Simmons, I'm in the MFA program and I'm also a staff writer for that career center. Fantastic. So this is good. It gives us I'm the good. only person from CAS. <laughs> oh, that's econ. 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 No, no, no. We've got <laughs> right, right. So we have all these pieces. So everybody's. Everybody thinks they know what Glass is, so here's what we're going to do. We want to share with you how this wearable technology fits into a university and an educational experience. And, and we're going to give a little bit of background, so I guess we could flip on this, right? And so to get us started... I made a short little clip on campus. By the way, how cool does Erin look? Because she's got her... <laughs> oh, hold on, we don't have any sound. <laughs> Killed the wait, sound. wait, where's the sound? Sound is really good. Sound is very good. Right so I should you? preface this conversation that anytime <laughs> you do anything with Maybe technology, I guarantee it's never going to work the right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right. You guys all know that, right? Everybody gets that? So this is a very high-risk presentation, oh, but yeah. we're up for it. You have no idea how much technology is involved to get <laughs> all of the devices. We overloaded the wireless devices, so we had to bring our own wireless. The mute's on. Mute's on. Mm. Right, you are. Where's your mute button? Right there. Thank you. <laughs> They're tight to charge. Go back.
couple of ways I've been using cam um, glass around campus. Um, I took it to Hawaii and I was t able to, to make a recording while I was surfing. Um, I was able to go into one of our biology labs. Dr. Nancy Zeller is the lady at the very end. What she was showing me was that they have a new device that allows them to take pictures of cells under a microscope on your iPhone. I was dumbfounded by that and so I was wearing my glass and recording that video. One of the ideas is they're going to be able to record a video of doing these procedures in the lab and then have the students watch them outside the laboratory so they can learn how to do these things. And then of course I have my, my uh, recording of my MBA course with Dr. Mark Clark so that I can do note taking at the same time. So just a couple of the ideas we've been kind of going around campus and looking at. So. Okay, Shelly. Okay, so this week um, is the Consumer Electronics Show. Is anybody here following the Consumer Electronics Show? Is there anything in particular that strikes you about what's going um, on there? I think, you know, just working with disability, what, what I'm very interested in looking at wearable technology. Obviously. How does, for me, for my job, how does this person with disability benefit from wearable technology? Right, and yeah. so in fact, the big topic at the CES, which has draws thousands and thousands of people, even though Apple and Microsoft no longer participate, is wearable technology. And we see wearable technology in a lot of different environments. So one of the places where we've seen them is in the area of fitness. Um, I think Erin is actually sporting one of her little Fitbits oh, oh, right here. Actually, can click over. Show you. Hopefully it'll work. Come on, we can make this happen. Please work. What is she doing? So, so what she's trying to do is take a, a photograph oh. of her Fitbit. Killing me. Killing me. Okay, this is my Fitbit. So, um, <laughs> but one of the examples of wearable technologies are things that help us manage our health and wellness, and this has been a very big thing. So it could be as simple as a bracelet, which is tracking, for example, things like your heart rate so that it can tell you, you know, how, many ca how, how active you are, how many calories you consume. Um, we see these as ways to monitor the elderly, to mo um, help monitor people with diabetes. Okay, so there are lots of wearable technologies that we see that are going around the wrist. And of course, is anybody here sporting a pebble or a, um, a What's the Samsung watch? The Samsung oh, yeah. watch. So these are simply your smartphone that shows you the time and rings on your wrist. It's really Dick Tracy come to light, but it, stu it still requires that you have a real smartphone. Okay, so you still got this, but maybe you have it concealed and you're using the um, wrist technology, and that will only get better. Um, for the women in the room, stay tuned. They're really still, even with the sleeker looking ones, it's sleek for the men. It won't hit most of the fashion requirements for women. Um, that's just welcome to technology. <laughs> um, so lots of things going on there. Smart glasses. Okay, so think about some of your favorite movies. The Matrix, for example, right? We've seen these instances where people have put on glasses to create augmented reality so that you see more than what's in your natural frame of vision. Maybe it's actually showing you um, warnings. For example, we use these in flight simulators, driving simulators, where they'll use the different types of glasses. And so Google Glass is a really appropriate name. By the way, there are probably five or six other vendors who are also out there putting different devices that are head wearables. Some of them um, are very specialized. All of them, as um, Aaron's going to demonstrate for you, come with these interesting challenges about how they stay on your head. <laughs> and Erin is going to demonstrate for you how hers works and how she doesn't list to one side and, and so on and so forth. Um, a really cool application, I don't know if we can get this, will it come up on your phone? Which one? Whistle? Um, whistle. So here's an example um, for those of you who have pets or small children um, and you want to track where they are. Um, whistle is a wearable that you can put on your pet. And since most of you leave your pets at home when you come to work, this is a way for you to track what your pet is doing. Um, 
<laughs> so anyway, did that, that, that is on there. Whistle is just so you can go back to the regular yeah. example there. Um, and so one of the things that was really interesting in looking at um, Aaron's dog's activity over the last couple of days, she couldn't figure out why one day there was this really big spike in his activity until she got home and found the M&Ms all over the floor. Sure enough, you know, the dog had had a couple of M&Ms and their sugar went up and so <laughs> it was um, something that comes up. So we're doing wearables um, and for those of you who are very young and don't have children, by the time you have children, you'll probably be putting a wearable on your kid and this will be the way that you track them. I think there are probably a lot of parents who would love to track their college students, but not sure they really want to know where their college students are. And just this week, Intel announced um, it really a crowdsourcing, just a term of art, just so that people understand. Crowdsourcing is usually done with a technology. It doesn't have to be, but crowdsourcing is the opportunity where you bring in ideas from the crowd, lots of people, to try to solve a problem. Intel will be using crowdsourcing to actually host a competition called Make It Wearable. This is, um, you know, this is not a space where Intel has necessarily gained a reputation. We all think of Intel as what's inside the chip company. They are clearly trying to move into this marketplace. And so at CES, they announced a competition. If you go to makeit.intel.com, we have a link actually here, um, you can actually see the ground rules for being creative and putting out, we'll see if it comes up, um, how to create innovation in wearable technology. So we've seen crowdsourcing, by the way, be very successful. Um, we actually, just because we have somebody here from the State Department, we use a lot of times um, there are crowdsourcing techniques that are used. Um, IBM does these, they call them jams, where they try to solve various problems, global problems, whether it's education, hunger, uh, refugee management, things like that. We also see it's been used extensively in the pharmaceutical industry where they've tried to come up with different um, drug situations, various ways to manage health care in the pharmaceutical industry has been successful with crowdsourcing. So if you're excited about wearable technology, now you can um, participate. Uh, maybe after today you'll get inspired and get some ideas. Um, and you'll be able to do that with Intel. So what we'd like to do now is we're going to actually demonstrate and show you how Glass works. And then what we're going to do is once we give you a sort of a good baseline and everybody understands it, we're going to come back and we're going to share with you how some other schools are doing it. And then what we really hope we do is we get into a brainstorm about what we are going to do with our next three copies of the Glass which will hopefully be coming to um, some designated people on campus over the next two to three months. So I'll we'll sit see. down and let Erin share with you how this works. And <laughs> apologize for the glare. Yeah, sorry about that. So um, I'm wearing glass now. We'll take it off and take it apart so I can show you guys. So um, how many people have actually seen one of these walking around town? In your favorite bars. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Glass is mostly made out of titanium and plastic, and it's very lightweight. Um, I wear glasses usually, so these weigh actually less than my chunky, big, thick rims that I usually put on. Um, very flexible, so you can't break it. Makes it really well for putting in your bag. Um, this, uh, the way it's set up is uh, you uh, usually refer to them as glass, not glasses. The reason why is even though they look like a pair of glasses, glass actually refers to the prism. That's how they, they um, they project the image. So the, the image projection comes out of the piece here, hits the, uh, the little angle in the prism, and so it looks like a screen that's projected about 20 feet away. Um, I, since I'm nearsighted, I actually have to wear contacts in order to see glass. People think that because the image is right up next to your eye, it would, shouldn't matter. I should be able to see it close up, but the way uh, the prism reflects the light, I actually need contacts to see something that's about an inch away from my eyeball. Um, it's, it's highly adjustable. You're able to adjust where the uh, prism um, is located and the, uh, the uh, nose pieces so that it sits correctly on your face. The, the ideal place is actually right above your field of vision. The whole idea Google had was getting technology out of the way. And so rather than having someone looking down at their phone all the time, they wanted to have technology so that you look people in the eye and had a conversation. The funny thing is, is if you're looking at glass, you're clearly not paying attention to anyone else. <laughs> 
Uh, my roommates joke that when I'm playing around with my glass, I'm clearly not in the conversation. <laughs> It is worse than when I'm actually looking at my phone, because at least I can have the <laughs> illusion of paying attention to someone else. Um, since glass is a little lopsided, you can see that um, all the technology is actually on one side. People have conversations about, well, doesn't it fall off your face, or why doesn't it sit sideways? It's because it's perfectly balanced uh, over your ear. Uh, the projection piece is balanced by the battery, which is back here. In the original version of the glass, this is the second generation Explorer edition, just got it before Christmas, the best Christmas present ever. Um, it has bone conductive technology. Uh, the whole idea was that people would be able to wear glass without any sort of earpiece and that it would vibrate against your skull and you'd be able to hear it in your ear canal. It works um, not really well in public areas, which if you're wearing technology around, you're clearly going to be in a public area. So as it turns out, they, uh, they Google asks us for feedback every month or every couple of weeks. And one of the things we kept saying is we can't hear anything. Uh, and so the new version, they have the earpiece that connects. So now I can hear conversations, I can call my mom and actually hear what she's saying. Novel thought. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, so when you're wearing glass, um, you can interact it, stop talking. Uh, you can interact it in a couple ways. Uh, there's a, a touch pad that goes uh, from the projector all the way back to the battery. And this is, uh, you can use it to swipe through. The way glass um, appears in front of your face is kind of like a carousel of cards, and it kind of rotates forward and backwards. If you rotate forward in the carousel, it shows you things that are going to happen next. If I Google um, the Motorola uh, store nearby, it understands that, Google understands that since I work until 5 o'clock, I'll probably want directions to the Motorola store at right after 5 o'clock, and so if I swipe forward, it'll show me the driving directions to get to Motorola next. It'll also show me the weather today, and tomorrow, and the rest of the week, and any other information I may have searched for <laughs> throughout the day. Now, if I swipe backwards, it shows me information for things I've already done. So pictures I've taken, video I've recorded, things that have been posted to Mashable, or any of my apps. I have, uh, I'll be talking about some of the apps that come on Glass, but you can swipe through and be able to use any of those, like, um, like an app on your phone. Um, the main screen, um, we'll go through this in a second, but it's, I'll show you, hopefully, if we can get the technology to work. You can uh, interact by telling Glass to do things um, verbally. So, okay, Glass, take a picture. Of what? Hmm? Of what? You guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, you could, there's also a, a camera button on the top that I could take a picture just like you would a camera. You hold it down to, take, to record a video, or you can say, okay, Glass, record a video and it'll record everything So this is one of the reasons we wanted to have it in a laboratory setting, since there's definitely some procedures that's very difficult to do, very difficult to demonstrate for an entire class. And so if the instructor could uh, demonstrate something on glass and, uh, and record it for their students, everyone will be able to see exactly what they're supposed to be doing, exactly how it's been done. We have, uh, we'll show you um, an example of um, USSF, UCSF, yeah, UCSF. Um, that did heart surgery with the surgeon using glass. And so they're able to demonstrate something that's very difficult to do in very fine detail using glass. Um, let's see, uh, what else? Do you have any questions? Yes. Yes. Um, so when you say uh, take video, take a photo, basically it is taking that. Yeah, the camera's right here. So when you move your, you know, your head, yeah. that's what Going to be the video. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's um are it you gives you that when you are filming it. Or? Yes, it shows up. Um, actually, if I can. You want to see if we can actually? I'll, I'll I'll roll back to the video. I took a I took a video with glass, and I'll show you exactly what it'll look like. So. Okay. So this is me recording with glass, and this is what it looks like. You'll see a miniature of whatever you're recording, and it'll have the timer. It automatically uh, records a video for 10 seconds, but if you tap on the pad or hold down the button, it'll record for as long as you want. I tried this in one of my finance classes. Apparently, you can record for two and a half hours on glass and the battery goes dead before the memory does because there's 16 gigs of memory in the, in the glass. What resolution is the video? 
Um, I honestly have no idea. I know it's a 10 megapixel camera. <laughs> it's very high resolution. This is um, the quality of stuff. I compressed it several times using Premiere and it was terrible. Yes, sir. Um, and how is the, um, how well does it absorb sound is it in the recording classroom? I can hear, I can hear fairly fine detail within 20 feet and okay detail after that. And so if I'm doing something, I'm doing some, an interview with someone, I'll usually sit within five feet of them and I can hear them just like I'm talking to you now. Um, I was recording classroom lectures and the professor's 10, 15 feet away and wandering around mm -hmm. and I was hearing it just fine. Um, and so if you're doing, because one of the things, um, I know you're interested in assistive technology, mm -hmm. um, one of the things they have used glass for in assistive technology is actually um, being able to screen capture and um, closed caption people's conversations and there's a note taking function in, in glass. For that st type of um, I guess listening capability you do need to be a lot closer and so if it was going to be screen, uh, it's going to be ca closed captioning a conversation I'd probably say that person needs to be between five and ten feet. I'll give you the idea of um, if, if the commission of the professor is recording class and yeah. um, um, record the class and somebody can learn this and go back to the class. And Exactly, yeah. and I and it works really well. And uh, one of the, that was one of my my key concerns is actually being able to record a class section from one of my co my uh, cohort mates mm -hmm. that couldn't come. I was able to record the entire thing from my perspective. And it um, has anyone ever seen a video of a faculty member teaching with a static camera like this one right here? Where the faculty member just kind of moves in and out. The difference with glass is that as soon as you watch the video you feel like you're sitting in the classroom because glass moves as the faculty member moves around or look at the rest of people in the classroom and it has this kind of immersive feel to it instantly and so it's more engaging and more interesting to watch and even though I'm, I'm not the best uh, <laughs> statistics or finance person it's way more fascinating to, to watch a video that's kind of live and moving rather than something that's static and you can kind of tune out. <laughs> So I'm, re I'm really excited about the, uh, the possible use of this, of just doing lecture capture of the, the very basic thing that glass can do, not to mention all of the really interesting things it can do in a laboratory. So um, anyone have any questions about how it works? Yes. So I, I guess I missed the most basic thing, but are you creating something on your laptop or your, your computer that syncs to glass when you first get it? Good question. Um, so my glass is linked to my Google account, and that includes my Gmail, my calendar, my Google Plus, every single thing I can do. It's the same login. And so when I record a video or take a picture, it goes into this private area of Google Plus where I can then share it or send it to someone afterwards. But I can also download it from my glass or from my computer as uh, an MOB. So that's why you said if I'm looking for something, it'll give me directions because you would have been tied to Google Maps. Exactly. I'll be, uh, I use Google Chrome as my browser, and Google Chrome is on my browser. It is logged into my Gmail account, and so it's watching whatever I'm doing and giving me the most interesting, most useful results on my glass. The whole idea was to be able to step away from technology and still have the information that you needed. Okay, and now this is a stupid question. <laughs> Do you get dizzy? No, um, it's, it's off right now. <laughs> well, I just, it feels like almost like it could be disconcerting. Mm -hmm. If you're recording a lecture, you're just sitting still and recording. I get that. But if you're walking around and saying, you know, how do I get there? And you're doing this with your fingers and you're also kind of looking up and then looking. It seems like you've looked up a couple times yeah. and then you've made eye contact with us. So I can't tell if it's shifting so your balance or not. Um, it's you can, I, it's, it's kind of like walking with a smartphone. I do not advise it. <laughs> for a variety of reasons, Much as it was, the, the Twitter tweet that got me glass was me telling Google that I needed a glass so that I wouldn't walk into traffic while I was trying to find directions on my phone. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's great for that. <laughs> um, but interacting with your phone, if you're not paying attention, it's the same as if you're driving with some sort of distraction. Um, I can walk in and, and pay attention to low-level tasks fairly easily. It doesn't make me dizzy. I'm mean, distracted, definitely. Um, but uh, most of the stuff I'm using glass for as I'm walking, the weather, I'll look at the weather really quickly or take a video or take a picture and I don't actually have to look at it while it's doing it because I trust it's looking at whatever I'm looking at. So, yeah. It leads a little bit into my question. It looks like you can only see it with your right 
eye. So when you're looking through it, you still see through it, right? Because yeah, your left yeah, yeah. eye is looking at the same thing. But yeah, the, the way your perspective works, the eye, someone who's in optics can understand, can understand this probably better than even I do. Uh, the screen looks like it's directly ahead of you. So even though it's over my eye, because my, my, my right eye is looking directly at it, and my left eye isn't, it, it splits the difference. And so it looks like it's a 20 foot screen in the back of the classroom. Okay. Can you put it on? Yeah, I'll, we'll, if we have enough time, I'll let you start. I'm, I'm going to try to demo it so you guys can see what it looks like when I'm looking at things. Yeah. Tell me about what you're using for augmented intelligence. So uh, where you overlay um, names of buildings on top of it, uh, any, anything that you use for augmented intelligence. So um, Google Maps, in, when it comes to Google Glass, is really interesting. So it's not so just directions, but it'll actually overlay the route on top of whatever you're looking at. And then as you turn your head, it'll reorient the map as you turn to turn left and right. And uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is uh, translation. I really, really enjoy the translation app so far. It's uh, called Word Lens. Right now it's only for French, and, uh, French, English, and Spanish. It'll translate back and forth from those languages. And the way it works is if you look at a word in French, English, or Spanish, it can translate it visually. And so I can't even describe it. The word disappears in one language and appears in another language right on top of it. So you're reading a billboard in Spanish now? Yeah. And then it turns into English. It's the weirdest thing. On top of the billboard? On top of they the have billboard. that same app for iPhone and I guess yeah. for Android devices as well. It's, it's a crazy thing, yeah. yeah. Is it immediate translation? It's immediate. And you have to be connected to the internet. That's it it's magical. It's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I had Jill show I was like, you can even do this. And it translated Amarillo into yellow. It was beautiful. <laughs> right, but that's one of the interesting uses we thought about going abroad and if you have trouble reading another language, I'm much better at speaking and listening in another language than reading, especially in Arabic. Um, it'll be able to visually translate something. Not exactly, it's not going to give you um, the interpretation of what that would be in Spanish or French, of course, but it'll give you an idea of what you're looking at so you're not quite so confused with looking at a road sign. So we're going to try that out when we go to Argentina or Uruguay this summer. I'm very excited. Echo that. <laughs> well, questions? Yes. Well, I'm just kind of thinking this through. Like, I mean, when it comes to research perspective and how people do research and how they approach research, do you think Google Glass is a tool to do research while you're interviewing somebody or, 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 or they're showing uh, artifacts and objects or whatever that case may be in the research field? Exactly. I do have a question. Yes. Um, the, this is the human mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. You're tilting your head. Is there, is there also the ways to tilting? The way? I mean, obviously, I see you tilting upward, but is there a more sort of subtle way so somebody doesn't know you're tilting your head? So yeah, you can you can just touch it. That's all you have to do. So what about the head angle? Can you do it if somebody has limited range of movement? Not yes. Not your disability. The, the head angle is, um, you can change it. Um, I mind set to 25 degrees <laughs> before it turns on because I nod my head a lot. And so it doesn't come <laughs> all the time. Someone that has a limited range of motion, they'd be able to, to tilt it a little bit slightly. It'll do anything from one degree to, I think, 35 degrees. Um, so you have to tilt your head all the way up. Can you tell it to turn on? Um, yeah, you just touch it. I mean, but no, it, it it's not listening to uh -huh. me until the main screen. Yeah. It's because, and this happened when I was um, in Aaron's class, I was talking about Google. And it kept thinking I was wanting it to Google something. <laughs> and so it can't constantly be listening to it. I just like it just did. <laughs> Go away. Um, and, it, and otherwise, it'd be constantly listening to your conversations and accidentally taking pictures when you're talking about pictures. And things like that. So, but yeah, I, as a social scientist, I was in SIS and now I'm in COVID. I'm very interested in the, the ability of using glass as an interviewing tool. Just kind of getting the camera away from things, not having to use a recording device, and just having to have conversation. You know, it's a very intimate first-person perspective in any sort of recording you do. So. Have you had anybody say, I wish you would take that off? Um, no. People think I'm recording them at all times, though. Uh, that's the conversation I had most often. Are you taking a picture of me? Are you, are you recording me right now? And I usually tell me, I usually say, why would I be taking a picture of you? It's a practical it, question, and I think people assume because it is a camera and that I'm constantly using it on my head, but uh, my battery life would go out in about half an hour if I did that, <laughs> and plus I'd have hours of my day recorded that are 
incredibly boring to watch. <laughs> so, but people have uh, people are more curious than anything. I was, m as I was mentioning earlier, I had a white glass first. Uh, my first glass was a very bright color, it's very obtrusive. And so when I had a chance to switch to the, the next generation, I decided to choose the darkest one I could find, just because I was, I was tired of having this conversation, because it's so new. And I like wearing my glass, but I would actually stop wearing it because I was, didn't want to interact with anybody at that time, time. So I'm a little more introverted. Do you want to just show them um, the how your phone is attached? Yes. I think it's important to understand this isn't a standalone thing. It, it's a reason why it knows that it's um, Aaron's Gmail account. Please, on. please work. Oh, yes. Work. Yay. Oh, is this is my dog app. <laughs> now that I couldn't show you earlier. This is my dog and his activity. This is one of the wearables we were talking about. Um, but let me see if I can get... I got to turn on my Wi-Fi. This is not for the technical neophyte. You, you want to, you got to be patient. Yeah, we uh, had several conversations with OIT because um, you're able to screencast from glass onto your phone um, if your phone and your glass are on the same Wi-Fi network. But if they're not, um, there's really no way of doing it except for tethering. Uh, so what I'm having to do is create my own Wi-Fi network to to hook into glass. So once we get started, I'll show you how the people ask me about glasses. Um, there's actual lenses you can put on the glass. They just kind of hook on like this. So if you really want to look like you're in a science lab, I suppose you wear these. <laughs> are, are they prescription? Are you being just these like are regular. These are just, um, I guess, so people didn't think they were weird just walking around with rims. Um, they do have prescription lenses now. And my incredibly nerdy dark glasses. <laughs> I will say I thought I was going to use those a lot more than I actually do. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to hopefully my Wi-Fi is all set up. Oh, we're in business. We can make this happen. This works, so I'm going to be overjoyed. <laughs> okay. So, this is what's called My Glass. Uh, it's an app for Android and for iPhone now. And it, uh, it allows me to check in on Glass. Since Glass has to be either tethered to my phone to pick up internet or on a Wi Fi network because it doesn't have 3G or 4G. Um, it can pick up the Wi-Fi on campus just fine. OIT and I worked that out for good. Um, but it allows you to look at your contacts on glass. And uh, the, uh, the apps, they're called Glassware. So these are all my contacts, the people that I can call directly from glass. My friend Katie, who's one of the AV techs. <laughs> um, uh, glassware, this is, these are all the applications that are currently working on my glass. So I have my recipe book. Evernote, which is a note-taking software, which is what I use for um, capturing information. Uh, Facebook, of course, be able to post your videos and pictures directly to Facebook. Field Trip. Field Trip is a really interesting app, especially for educational purposes, because what it does is it automatically pops up if there's something interesting or of note in your area, and so and it gives you more information. Like when I come onto campus, it automatically wants to talk me, uh, tell me about General Ward <laughs> in, the, in the circle and all this information about that. <laughs> Was, did you know? And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, did you care? <laughs> it's true. You can mute it, though. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> um, golf site, this is a new one. Uh, it'll give you, uh, be able to see uh, uh, court golf courses 
uh, is Google Plus, of course. IFTTT is, it comes as if, um, if, the, uh, if this, then that. It's a, a piece of software that allows you to set up some sort of alert that connects pieces of software. Um, I think this is a better as example. I set this up for one of my faculty members to demonstrate. When I get a Twitter uh, tweet back to one of my feedback, it automatically pops up in my glass. And the way you can use this in the classroom is, and I was explaining this to my math, one of my math professors because he's a lot of very quiet students that don't like raising their hands. So if he gets a tweet, it would automatically pop up to his glass while he's teaching. Oh, could you please go over that question again? I had a question about so and so. I was really hoping you could discuss da da da. And it automatically goes into the glass. And so he can get real time feedback as he's teaching. And uh, another um, egg of someone using that at Berkeley? Cornell. Cornell was the, um, the instructor. Okay, Kitch Me. There's, uh, there's WordWins, YouTube, tons of apps. And they keep getting more with eight, and now there's 80. That's a really interesting thing. So screencast will hopefully get us to work. Okay. Let's see this. Or if not. That makes it worse. <laughs> okay. So well, oh, here we go. So we're gonna hopefully it'll pick up what as I'm going through this. So these are pictures that I've taken. Uh, just chatting with my uh, my roommate there. Hey, that was a great idea. <laughs> Um, this is a, a tweet that uh, Mashable says any user can now email you without your address. That's interesting alert. If I want more information, I can have it read it aloud. <laughs> Not that interesting. Um, here's the weather. If I want more information about the weather. Here. Oh, did it kill me? Okay. So Cabin John apparently is 37 degrees. Um, but anyway, this is what gla ga glass looks like. Um, from this screen, I'm able to tell it to do verbal commands. So, okay, glass, record a video. And this is what it looks like when it's recording, but you can't see any of it. Anyway, <laughs> better in thought than practice, but yeah, we need more light. Can you turn up the brightness on your phone's screen? Um, it's like it's a black light, so this is what it looks like, unfortunately. So. Can you see that though? Yeah. Okay, glass. Um, what do I want to do? Find a recipe. Okay, glass. Oh, let's see, we got it. Take a picture, record a video. Oh, <laughs> listening too closely. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, sir? No, I'm just waving to the picture. Oh, so. I can try to do the translation. So let me see if I can do the translate afterward from here. Oh. I have something in Spanish. Okay, glass. Let's translate this. You guys saying anything? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like magic, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it would look like. It actually changes the complete word as you're doing things. So, yes. Can you do, uh, you may mention an apology, can you also do voice, uh, actual audio translation? Yeah. Okay, Glass. Oh, oh, you're talking about, no, translating vi um, verbally. No, okay. not yet. Um, you can Google a translation. Yeah. So you can say, okay, Glass, Google. How do you say flower in Spanish? Flor. You can use Google for anything normally. Of course, right. Google's a what, but it's so it's not an app. It's just Google being awesome. Oh. <laughs> so if you're doing um, recording, let's see. Take a note. Evernote. 
So you can record with Evernote. No. Okay, Glass. Take a note. Okay, with Evernote, you're able to speak, and it will automatically translate whatever you're saying into some sort of text, and that can be saved either to your computer or to your Evernote account, or it can actually be used to uh, caption someone's conversation that's speaking very close to you. So it was just capturing what you said? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a beautiful uh, device it, for it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah it's a, Evernote is a note-taking software that, that a lot of researchers use to um, type their books um, because it's, it's not Dragon, it's a free version of Dragon, um, but when it's coupled with glass, it actually gives you a really impressive array of options as far as researching or captioning conversation even. So. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I assume it's probably, um, there's a bit of a blip in the camera and mm -hmm. I have a feeling that's the microphone, it's forward facing. So it, it's, it has a, it's $1,500 worth of sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the, they, uh, they worked out a lot of glitches before they let us explorers have them. And so it does surprise me how well it works sometimes. Yes. And speaking of you know, letting you have them, you mentioned there was like a Twitter thing you had to tweet or something. Yes. I was just curious the selection process of how you got the glass. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> We're very proud of her, so tell them what you did. It's a really nerdy thing. Um, so <laughs> I'm a very big Google geek and a tech nerd in, in general. And um, when Google had a, a competition back in February of 2013, yeah, mm -hmm. it was just last year, um, they gave people options of uh, writing a tweet or writing a Google Plus post about if I had glass, if I had glass, I would, and you were supposed to pose some sort of hypothetical about what you would do with the technology. And then they went through there and they selected 8,000, 5,000 regular folks, 5,000 uh, developers at CES, 5,000 regular folks. So they selected 5,000 applicants from across the country to allow us to purchase glass. We didn't get them for free. Um, and then I didn't get mine until June. And, uh, but I was one of the, the people I was talking about, uh, if I had glass, I would get to explore DC rather than getting run over by a taxi. <laughs> so I do love to wander around DC, but I'm very bad at navigating. So I use my phone maps app all the time. And now that I have my glass, I can use the, the, uh, the visual overlay of the map too. So. But they're going to be opening up probably in the next few months. I just got three invitations, which I gave to the university at whole. Kogod was given one. My home of CAS was given one, and then I gave one to the library so that they could have a device that people could check out. So ideally, we're going to see how this goes. We we're looking for feedback, but the possibilities you guys are thinking of. Us. So we got anything you're thinking about that you would want to do using your research in your classroom, for fun. <laughs> yeah, we can show you what that. some are doing and yeah. we can show you what we think we might do with these. Yeah. So so it's, it's still 1500 yeah. um, and what we did with these new invitations is we wrote grants to our deans. It was pretty hard for them to say no. Um, and in order to do these, you know, one of the challenges is that this is Erin by herself. And it's Aaron's phone, it's Aaron's Google account, and it's so, you know, if you're not, in most, I assume everybody gets it. If you use Apple, you gotta have your Apple ID. If you use Google, you gotta use your Google ID. So what we did um, when we asked for these is we not only asked for um, the glass, but we actually um, are also gonna buy an Android phone we're not going to do these with iPhones because we think the apps will come much more quickly out of the Android market. And so we're going to buy an Android phone. It's going to have a, you know, I like created a Gmail name for Kogod. And then what we'll do is we'll have a glass and a phone that will be tethered. And that way we can more easily share them because they're not really designed to be shared. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of fake out the system so that we can actually do experiments and make it reasonably easy. And, you know, it'll be tricky as we move it from users because there's a fitting and so on. But at least from a technology point of view, we've created a closed technology environment. So each of the, the three glass that will come to us through the next wave 
we will then purchase an Android device, pair them, and that's how we'll um, make it work. Does that kind of, yeah, so, so there's real money. No, no, I was asking for private use, I mean, for us. So if you were somebody, if you were Erin's friend and she just gave you an invitation, you would still have to buy the device for $1,500. But you can go out and buy it. No, not yet. Not. So it's all still, this is very experimental. You know, one of the things you see at CES with the wearables in general is these are not really ready for consumer consumption. Mm -hmm. These are tricky. I mean, you're watching Erin, who has been using this for months, and you just... You have to fight with it. It has moments. Yeah. Everything new has moments. Yeah, it's got the circle of death, the wheel of death, the red egg. It's got all those things that we're used to in technology. So you can't go buy these in stores. Google is now basically going from 10,000 people to... Thir they're going to add 30,000, so there'll be 40,000 people in the U.S. using this device, and it'll be a mix of developers and folks like us, and experimenting and constantly giving feedback to Google. Quite frankly, this may never come out as a product like this. I think Google thinks that this one will, but a lot of the wearable devices will sort of stay very lab testing mm -hmm. so that we can fi they can figure out if they're really designed for adaptable technology or for regular use. Um, you may be following in the paper that there are a lot of, for example, some of the bars have said glass is banned because they don't want you in there, you know, stalking somebody, you know, and making this the ultimate pickup spot because there are a lot of issues around the privacy pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go to your favorite store and buy it. And I would mention health clubs as well because health clubs have banned cell phones for yeah. some reason. Kind of Movie theaters. There's tons of places. I would never want to take my cell phone even much less right. glass. So there's tons of places. Bars have, have pretty much systematically gotten rid of glass. Um, I don't wear my glass in a bathroom just because that's awkward. Um, <laughs> health clubs, any sort of gym. Just, because the toilet just like where you would never wear, where you would never take your cell phone. That's where you should not be wearing glass. And uh, it's a, they, they talked to us, we, uh, we have the first 10,000, we had to go to actually an employee appointment at Google. Um, in three different areas, and they talked about etiquette and how you know you'll find people that are very against what you're wearing, and you have to be completely fine with taking it off and, be, and not being offended. So it's just part of the having a new piece of technology. Yeah. Did, did, did they also say there are like moments where it's like dangerous? I mean, but what about well, yeah. Driving? Don't don't wear it while driving. <laughs> don't wear it while driving. You will get a ticket. In you will. California, they <laughs> give a it. ticket. It's very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it's very high distraction. Yeah, I guess maybe for that reason, we're not coming to the consumer market because people would, you know. They will abuse it. So they've got, they this it. has got to be adapted yeah. in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. You bring out an interesting point for in the, in the, in the disability community. Um, they see it as the other, uh, other side of it, right? The person who is physically unable to use their hand. Um, actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but you, uh, Google has a YouTube video with all the Google Glass demonstration. Yeah. And they're very well done. They do and some really nice somebody with physical disability. Very impressive. Right. And, and, and they're trying to they're trying to justify people with disability who cannot use their hands. Mm -hmm. Should they be limited from accessing areas that do not allow Google Glasses? Do you not you're discriminating them? Well, and and I would probably and argue an thing to see. it's an assistive technology at that point. It's right. kind of like you know having a dog with you. If you need that to, to adapt and to work around right. your environment, that's completely fine. We, we need the exemption for certain yeah, exa yeah, exactly. So I'm you're going, but this is <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you came. It's good to see you. These are, um, this is really experimental. But, it, but it, exci it, it is very exciting, it, too. Yeah, I go to... Something's going to happen. So. Yeah, I mean, hit the light there just so you can see this. Um, here are just a few things that are being done, and we, and we stayed away <coughs> for this purpose from some of the adaptive technologies. Um, at Cornell University, a music professor got a glass, and she's using it in a couple of ways. She teaches, for example, a conducting class, and a large part of grading students in conducting is looking at them and, you know, letting them see how their motions are affecting the way the orchestra is performing. And so they were actually able to do assessments with the professor wearing the glass 
and then she created the video and then she could do a voice over the video to give the students feedback on music conduction, conducting. The other thing that this particular professor is doing in her lab is she's um, experimenting with can you use a glass to replace music stands. So all that, you know, when you're sitting and you go to the symphony and the opera and they're flipping the music, are there ways to do that? Now it turns out, based on the way the field of vision is done, there are some interesting challenges because mu everything is presented horizontally in glass and it's presented more vertically um, on a page, but those are all things that can be adapted. So very interesting things specifically to deal with education in the music pieces, the lab demonstrations, the excitement, the Aaron's video, which doesn't, you don't hear it when you're a little far away, is listening to her absolutely shrieking with glee, watching this, um, these pictures of these um, cell photos. But so imagine, for example, that you're trying to train surgeons. So at the University of California in San Francisco in their medical center, they're using this as an instructional tool so that they can train new doctors. And you can, you can then share this more broadly. So imagine delivering these types of things into more rural communities where you want to do procedures. Uh, if you think about, if any of you remember from your science days, you know, and the professor would be talking about, you know, all right, well, you're going to do this and this, and you're sitting in the back row, and you're trying to figure out what beakers are, you know, and petri dishes are being used but you could actually see that from the live action component. So we're seeing a lot of that going on. So, so yeah. like in that example, if you're the professor wearing it and you're showing the class what you're doing, then is Google Glass projecting it onto a screen? You've got a couple of options. So you can do that, just like the way I did for you. There's hopefully, I couldn't get this. Better the connection. connection. Better see connection. The connection. Look at there. Um, one of the things, and we have a video from some, a professor that went to CERN, you could do a remote lecture. So a professor is remoting into a classroom where they can't have an organic botanist or an organic chemist and showing them how to do these things remotely. Right, so like a hangout. Like a glass, but mm -hmm. then is, is he coming to you via Skype? Could be, yeah, could be. Hang out. So you yeah. could do it as a synchronous activity or you could do it as oh, a recorded right. video. And again, this gives you a lot of flexibility. You see the challenges with the synchronous um, right. components, but there's no question if you've got the bandwidth, you can do these things, and it gives you an enormous amount of flexibility. And if you look at, um, especially in the K-12 space, when you look at how they're gonna try to deliver education into remote areas or for homeschooled students, these will be ways that they'll be able to have accessibility on an asynchronous basis, for example, in science. But we can do the same thing in the university setting. If you're, um, you know, imagine that you're in a state university with 300 students in an intro chem lecture, and the professor wants to show something, they'll be able to do that using um, the glass. Um, guided field trips, this is an example of the science, and we've got a link in here to um, a middle school physics professor who did have the opportunity, who was sponsored to go to CERN to see the electron accelerator. He was actually able to do a series of things when he was in Switzerland and bring that live action back into <coughs> his school as it was going. And the students were able to actually ask questions going back. We're hoping that, especially I know we've got some SOC folks in here, if you start to think about movies, journalism, um, Iran is thinking about this when he does his overseas travel trips out of the business school. How do you bring that um, tool so that you can either do your own, say you're doing faculty travel and you want to record what you're doing and bring it back or do it live action so students can do projects. Aaron will be going on a trip in May with professional MBA students, and we're hoping to use the glass for the students to actually build out some of their project work using um, the field trip capability. So, so this, yeah, yeah. this is one of what Google Glass calls their explorer stories. So this is one of the, the first 10,000 explorers that used it for a really interesting um, uh, idea. This is Andrew Van, uh, Van Hubble. 
He uh, is a science professor, wanted to be an astronaut, and he took it to CERN for some of his students. So I'll show you guys. There's a good space that shows the live part of the Earth. It's like it's not getting stereo. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. We're missing one side. Okay, well, we'll get to see Andrew. Yeah, yeah. I think the focus has to be on the oh, okay. channels, but we should have done that before. Okay, we'll get to see Andrew. Yeah. He's talking about how he's going to CERN, and he gets to put on a hard hat and walk through. And this is the Hadron Collider, and this is him from glass. He's going to hang out with his brother's class back in Nebraska. And so this is his student's class. So they're able to view CERN from his perspective, and he's able to talk to him about it while they're still in Nebraska. And so they're asking him questions, and he's able to keep videoing while he's riding his bicycle down the, the full length of the Hadron Collider. So they ask him questions. They're getting up and per up personal with a really interesting thing that not a lot of people have access to. <laughs> but this is what it looks like with glass when you're boarding video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Andrew's story. Very interesting stuff. One of the wonderful ways you can use glass to kind of augment the, the teaching experience. And so here, these we sort of said, okay, here are some things that we think we might do. We are going to have three of these. Um, one will be reside in Kogai, one will reside in CAS, one will be in the library. But I think that there's an enormous opportunity for us to share these across programs. So SOC guys don't get upset. There, there's plenty of opportunity. I mean, everybody knows that we're going to ultimately get these, and um, hopefully they will become more um, generally available because I know. Um, I don't know if anybody's doing this on the journalism side, but you know, to be able to, inter to integrate this with, say, Storify, which I know a number of the journalism faculty are using, I mean, this is just great, and it lets your hands go free and so on. I only had three invites. I would have given you guys one otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be picky. I cannot tell you the amount of bribery. <laughs> um, but we hope that um, even if this doesn't become the product, the final product. Um, it, it really extends the way we think about our classrooms, the way we interact with our students, and the way we bring our experience to our students, because we can't always just do that standing up in front of them and um, you know lecturing. And for those of you who are more fashion forward, um, please know that Google is working with Warby Parker so that at least we'll start to get some glasses that look cool. <laughs> um, you know, so that, that's actually also on the horizon. So what do you guys think? What, what, what can we add? What, gosh, what do you want to do? If you had glass, what would you do? Well, what, what I find, find fascinating is it's kind of the integration of, you know, kind of Skype, where you have like conservation mm -hmm. real, but then also that, you know, we, we as SOC, we have to be used, of course, these small cameras, the GoPros, we stick it on the head and, right. and have this point of view. And we have already these images, these moving images, you know, but now having it integrated in, you know, in, 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 in something so small. And uh, that is. But but like the GoPro, you know, it, you're aware of it, you know, and I think that that's the key thing is that these wearables are not invisible, you know, they're, you know you've got them, and of course this will continue to create lots of challenges um, when we start to look at issues around privacy and when you can use them and what are the right issues around etiquette, so it certainly is a teachable moment gives us a chance to think about how do we 
help our students understand what's wonderful about these technologies, but where they also, we need to pause and think about how different cultures would use them, or just where it's appropriate. And I'm really glad to know that you don't use yours in the bathroom. It's just <laughs> creepy. Like, you know, really, I mean, it's, the whole thing can get a little crazy. Yeah, run. So one, one of the things I'm thinking of, we've been focused here on this discussion on the teacher having glass, but what's going to happen in 2020 when my entire class has, is wearing Google Glass? You better make sure your hair's combed. <laughs> well, that's, that's certainly, but, but let's talk about the positive, because I yeah. can think of lots of negatives as well, <laughs> um, the, the, all the creepiness and all that, but, but what do I do? All of my class and me, uh, we're all wearing glass. So wh wh what's going to happen? How, how will that change the, the nature of the interaction? Yeah, for those of you who are in the mobile piece, you know, this becomes, this takes mobility to the wearable part. Because I... Yeah. The way I was using it in my yeah. stats class, so um, my first stats class is my first class um, when I had glass. I would ask my professor if it was okay if I wore glass, and he went, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I explained. And he was like, sure. And I came out great. He looked so good. And was totally fine with it. <laughs> Very great. nice man. He's just like, sure, I want to see the video afterwards. And we uh, we were able to experiment with different ways of recording class. And, um, I'm fairly okay with stats. It goes really fast. I could take pictures of the entire board and review them at my leisure. I could record sections of the, the conversations that we were having. If we had something that was really kind of interesting that we wanted to talk about later, I could record that and listen to it at another time. Technically, Ed could have asked me for the video and he could have used it with his classroom later in the semester to teach him about this, these little segments of, of uh, classes. But um, it kind of allowed me to... Ed talked about lychee fruit. And I've, I, you probably know what lychee fruit is because you're way more intelligent than I am. I had no idea what a lychee fruit was, um, but glass did. So a lychee fruit is a type of fruit that's native to Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Got to see one when I was in Hawaii. but. If your professor talks about something that's completely over your head, you can look it up instantly without having, and still like keep up with the conversation or, you know, have those facts right off the top of your head, literally. <laughs> so it kind of helps students uh, keep up in some ways. Do you still take notes? Yeah, I do. I'm actually um, a paper and pen kind of girl, even with my iPad <laughs> and everything. I, I just like the tactile nature of it, and I can draw pictures a lot faster. And I can think of when when the battery life gets better and the storage capacity increases, which is inevitable, mm -hmm. it'll probably have something that's like a buffering video thing that if you say something really interesting, it's always recorded, <laughs> but not until I press this thing yeah. will it go back 10 seconds and catch what you said. Uh, video cameras do this now, yeah. but it needs to have battery power to do it. Yeah. So that's something that would be pretty cool if you said something really interesting, but I missed it, I wasn't recording, I still tap the thing. And it'll go back 10 seconds to 1 second. And record it. So it's cool. It's a nice job. Sure. <laughs> but this is going to be another creep factor. <laughs> yeah, that, that's stuff we all yeah. understand. But I was thinking of the positive aspects. And, and the only this is not to be in any way critical of the technology, because I love technology. But the only thing I'm hearing from you so far, important as it is, mm -hmm. is that I can review the board and I can review the notes and see what. Uh, what would you use it for? No, I'm, I'm asking the question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an answer, actually. Yeah, they um they keep coming up with apps. Um, the more apps we have, the more interesting glass gets. Um, I gotta say, it was not quite as fascinating the first couple weeks I had it because it could look up my calendar entries, it could take pictures and video, and I could Google things. And it was very, very not talking to me. Um, <laughs> it was very, very uh, narrow. Um, They've, one of the reasons they added 5,000 developers in the first round of Explorers is because they wanted to be interesting. An iPhone without apps is just a piece of useless technology. Just like everything. It's a phone with music. And so glass without apps is the most boring thing you could possibly see to. And so it's gotten more interesting as the developers have um, developed more things. Like one thing I can do, I can take pictures by winking. <laughs> this is a good picture. <laughs> but uh, as they let people, they let it out into the wild, it gets more interesting and they come up with more ideas. Um, using facial recognition to help people with autism understand people's emotions 
um, using facial, facial recognition to help professors uh, remember people's names. <laughs> Right. There's a whole bunch of like this, these, these things that they're they're coming up with, and because people are having great ideas and having great conversations, we're able to think about them. I am not the most creative person in the world, so I have no idea what they're going to come up with next. But I love scanning Mashable and TechCrunch and about the newest thing that they've come up with. But it's going some places. I'm very excited. <coughs> we'll see. Yeah, I think so too. I think that Google is impressively, uh, you know, investing in this. Uh, I, I read an article in the New York about the driverless car. Yeah. I mean, I haven't count down that that long. <laughs> and after the article, I said, you know what? That is a solution for us. Having that, you know, because then uh, you reduce the driver who is the biggest risk, you know, you know, for all the other accidents, you know. It was very interesting. They are, you know, figuring that out. They're figuring that out. Maybe at one point, you know, it comes all together. And I'm sure it will. But I think to Iran's point, I think that the challenge, and I, and I hope people will go think about this, is what do we do? How do we help a student engage? What does this do to help improve engagement in the classroom? Um, you know, sort of following on our lunch conversations, are these things that we can use for assessment purposes? Are there activities that we can do that make the classroom um, more lively uh, because the challenge that we have with our students is that as they have more opportunity for distraction, we become less and less interesting, not as individuals, but education becomes an entertainment issue. And so how do we take that and really make it education? And you know, that these are hopefully people are gonna come up with some clever ideas. By the way, these glass, you know, it, as you do think about things you want to do, it isn't necessarily about you. You may want to give the glass to a student or a team of students to do a project or to facilitate something in a classroom. And so it, it isn't just about how we would use the glass, but it's really how we would use the glass pieces. The glassware API is completely free, so they want people to develop for it. You don't even have to have a glass to start developing right. apps for it. You know, so everything, you, and, and this is, you know, obviously there'll be these issues around do you do it on an iPhone, do you do it on Android. Um, we're hopefully going to do most of ours now on Android platforms just so that we have first access to the Google Store, which we think will get everything at least a week before the Apple Store gets it. <laughs> But these are good, you know. Thank you for challenging the group on this. Does anybody have anything they're now going to die to do now? They're like, all right, I'm on this. I got to go figure out how to get glass. <laughs> I know it's late in the day. Everybody's sitting there going, is my syllabus ready? Am I ready for Monday? The kids are showing up. I hope you guys have a great semester. I hope that this is something that you do get excited about, you share with your colleagues. Um, and I think that at least we know there's food in the um, back in the museum. <laughs> we expect there's probably some sort of, you know, libation as well. Um, and there is a good raffle. I don't know, do you know any of the stuff that's going on the raffle? Gift certificates, let's see. They had Amazon gift certificates, uh, Apple Store gift certificates, local, I know there's definitely Starbucks on there somewhere. <laughs> right. Lots so of things please like that. join us. Um, we're around, we're happy to um, get continue the conversation because we're trying to figure it out as well. So I appreciate that you spent part of your day with us. Um, have a great spring semester. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.